church um i just want to acknowledge the fact that things are you know a little bit different right now and um and i really appreciate and thank you all for abiding by all these guidelines that we've set in place and you know keeping yourself seated and, and um, you know refraining from singing um, when i was praying about this weekend and um, picking the songs that i was going to choose to to lead in in worship this morning i I really, there's a bit of a theme and I think you'll notice that as we, as we go through and it's about trusting in God and the fact that He is here with us, no matter the circumstances, no matter what we're going through. So, and I thought this was a really cool opportunity because not often do we, do we sit and let words just wash over us because though there is power in confession and yes, I agree that there is power there, there is also power in sitting and listening and acknowledging what God has done in your own life. So, you know, take this opportunity for, for what it is. Take it to do what you feel is, is the right thing. Maybe that's just in prayer with God through while we sing these songs. Maybe it's just remembering and honoring all the wonderful things that He's done in your life over the years. You know, it's, it's up to you. But I do pray that, that as, we, as we come and we worship together, because as we know, worship just isn't singing. It's a, it's a style. It's a choice that we, that we make in our lifestyle. It's, it's a choice every day that we make to worship God. So 
I just pray that, that as we come here together, we gather that we would remember how great and how awesome He is and all the wonderful things He's done in our lives. Amen. There's a grace when my heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. But when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the wars holding back the seas. Should I ever need a mountain? Could you set me free? There is a cross that bears the burden when another died for me. There is another in the Dead left the dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. But should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things I'll do this way.
Isn't that a great song for these times? Another in the fire. Isn't that a good, important thing to keep in mind as well, that um, the Lord is with us at all times. Can you hear me I've, while I've got this mask on? Not, am I a bit muffled? I am a bit. Okay. That's a bit better. Okay. That's good. It's good to be heard. Yeah. So um, how are you doing this morning? Good. Yeah. It's wet, but we're here. And... Um, yeah, look, it's good to get some rain in the garden, and yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, look, welcome, and um, welcome to people who are coming to us through Facebook, and just got some announcements. So, um, okay, we're doing the tithes and offerings in a moment, so uh, announcements in terms of people and so, that sort of thing, and what's happening. Uh, we have, this coming week, we've got the usual things happening at church, i.e., the, the Wednesday evening uh, Bible study, Tuesday evening men's prayer, and the Friday morning um, ladies' meeting, fellowship, and prayer. So that's all happening. Uh, Pastor Wayne will be in next Sunday, we hope, and he might be um, someone on, uh, might be joining us with Nita through Facebook. So hi there. Hope you had a good holiday if, if you are joining us, uh, Wayne and Nita. Um, yeah, so. Uh, what else? I'm just going to, uh, I guess, uh, before the tithes and offerings, just say a few words. Derek, if you want to come up as well to fill in the gaps, because I'll probably miss up, might miss something. But um, so I was wearing the, if, if you got an email from, from the church, maybe you didn't, but uh, basically underlining the importance of um, social distancing uh, and, I guess, um, the practicalities around COVID-19. So we're not in any way wanting to be fearful, are we? But we're just taking precautions. We're, we're, we're doing this so that we don't end up in a situation where we have more problems, where we don't want to be like uh, maybe Victoria or other areas. So we, we just want to really be looking after ourselves. So mindful of that. So things like uh, when we're uh, talking, if we can keep that 1.5 metres, if you're in the auditorium, area please sorry if you're in that foyer that's the word maybe uh don't hang around the foyer to talk so much please come into the auditorium please if you do that there's m much more space here you can also bring drinks as well into here up to the tiles area so uh do that um uh, thank you uh we've got uh communion as per last sunday as well so um, if the next two songs, if you wouldn't mind just coming up and grabbing the, the bread and the, the juice as well. Again, just being mindful of social distancing there. Um, so what have I missed, Derek? Can't hear you. Uh, I'll talk through this one. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so just the communion. Come on out. Keep your social distancing as you grab a, a biscuit and the, the cup during the next two songs. And then just go back, sit down in your seat. That will be good. Okay. Oh, the mass. Yes. Uh, it's not compulsory at this stage. And uh, highly desirable was the uh, wording from uh, the, uh, from the uh, uh, health department. Um uh, my wife made me one, so uh, 
and she made one for my grandson who's that's got Doctor Who on it. So, you know, so uh, but um, you can uh, you can get your mass, and if you want to wear one in church, then please do. Okay, we won't think you're going to hold us up or anything. So, uh, but at this stage, it's not compulsory. When it is, or if it becomes compulsory. Uh, the church will s- let you know, okay? So um, don't don't worry. But again, as Peter said, just the social distancing is important. Please don't congregate in the foyer. Uh, if you uh, want to talk to people, then please talk to them in the main auditorium here, okay? The, the rule, I guess, is if you came with somebody, you can sit with that person. If you didn't come with somebody then you can't sit with that person, okay? Basically, you need to keep your distance. Um, okay, now that is not, that. that's New South Wales health rules. It, we are trying to make sure that we are COVID compliant. We have our COVID plan and we need to be compliant with that. So, uh, you know, it's just just be aware of that. I know it's difficult at times when you haven't seen somebody for a week and you want to have a good old uh, chit chat but please do it you know at a uh, if you need to know sign language my wife can teach you okay so if you need to talk to somebody and, and distance is a problem Jackie can teach you sign language all right so uh, let's see how we go and uh, r- so during the next couple of songs come on out pick up your uh, communion back to your seats Jack is going to present the communion message this morning Uh, So Jack will do that after the second song. So before then, please grab your thing. And now I'll give back to Peter for tithes. Thanks, Derek. Uh, The tithes and offerings. uh, Yep, the the, the ways to give. Giving basket, direct deposit, giving envelope. There we go. All there. Okay, we've got some scriptures here from from the Word, from the Bible. Exodus 35, 21. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing and they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting for all its service and for the holy garments. And Nehemiah 4.19 Then I said to the nobles, the rulers and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive and we are separated far from one another on the wall. So that great work requires some great funding presumably as well. So... So, yes, please join me in this um, confession and these words. So, as I give in today's offering, I take my tithe and my special offerings and give them to the work of the Lord because I believe God's work is great and extensive and deserves my full-hearted support. I give expecting God to do mighty things in the midst of his people. Here, Lord, take my part and multiply it to do your work. Amen. Thank you. And yeah, for the next two songs, if you'd like to come and take the communion as well, just one at a time sort of thing, and just keeping distance, that'd be great. Thank you, church.
Uh, good morning. Um, I'm a little bit teary this morning, but that's okay. And um, it's good sometimes to be, for your heart to be broke. And it's good to come through it. And um, the songs this morning and what was said is so fitting because as I searched for the words that I would speak this morning, and I thought about communion messages that I've done before. The Lord gave me so much and so many different ways. And there was confusion. And in the end, I come to the realization that the Lord wanted to, me to do what he'd put me in the way to do it. And to use the skills that he gave me. He hasn't made me an academic. He hasn't made me a literary genius of any sort. But he has given me a kind heart and the knowledge that when you speak from the heart, it's always good and the love is always great. And as I look this week at Jesus' as sacrifice on the cross and so many, so many gifts he gave us from that, he gave us the new covenant in which we can have a relationship with him, the Father and the Holy Spirit. We get the Holy Spirit because Jesus said when i go to the father i will ask him to send an advocate for you to comfort you to see you through and as we look in these difficult times when it's easy to be scared with floods fires locust plagues um, disease and without the advocate we could easily be overwhelmed by fear, mistrust. But we can always seek the comfort of the Lord because we live in the new covenant. We live in a covenant where we're not condemned by our sin, but we're saved by grace. And what a beautiful experience that was. And we see that through Jesus' love and the way he poured it out, the way he cared for others. Even in his hour of need, in his great pain, if you imagine the pain that the Romans chose crucifixion for a very good reason, because it was extremely painful. It was extremely long. It took a healthy man three to four days to die on that cross. So when Jesus gave his life that day, he gave his life. It was not taken. Jesus was given all the power and authority and then he come to the earth, over the demonic, over us. And he could have spoken what was happening to him away at any time. And, you know, he had to have all authority for this to be a perfect sacrifice. It had to be that the demonic could not take him, that he had to give himself. And we could not take his life without his choosing and we look at the father who sent his only son and we know in John 3 16 that he sent it because he loved the world and he not only loved the world through that but he also loved and trusted Jesus because he knew that Jesus would follow through that he would not fail he would not fall and we see Jesus care constantly for us the whole way through. We see Jesus constantly. We see Jesus led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness and trust the Father. So we see the cross is not all about just receiving salvation, but receiving this, this means that we can trust. And we see this great trust and love shown from the Father, this trust and lo love shown in Jesus even to the point in great pain upon the cross, he takes the, the time to not only say, forgive them, Father, because they do not know what they, they do, but also to accept the salvation of the criminal and comfort him with the words that you will be in heaven with me tonight. And, um, and so he does this all through his pain and suffering. And we're given, the we're given the opportunity through this simple commandment to, um, to take bread 
and to break it and to have it in the memory of all the gifts that we received. Not just our precious salvation, the most precious of them all, but our comfort on this earth, our relationship with the Holy Spirit, that we don't have to wait when we're in turmoil to Sunday. We don't have to wait to get someone to pray for ourselves. We have that relationship. We have that right. We have that through Jesus' sacrifice and blood of pain upon the cross, which we inflicted on him, the world. The world, our sin, our crime. We are no better. We look at the world now, we're still thieves. We still kill. We still murder. We still have greed. We have not changed. We would place Jesus upon the cross just the same when we do every day. So it really is for our pain, our suffering. So, you know, if you want to say a prayer as I say this, and take your, take your bread, the representation of Jesus' body upon the cross broken, and say whatever prayers in your heart to comfort, to give thanks. But I'm just so grateful for all that pain and suffering done for me, done for my mother that I recently lost, that I know is in heaven because the Holy Spirit comforted me and told me that done for the other people I love, done so well, done so right in his glory. We give thanks for all that pain, all that suffering, all that forgiveness, all that grace. Please take the bread and say your own personal prayer, what's on your heart, what you want to give thanks for today. And as we take the emblem of the blood, this bit of juice, and we give thanks for Jesus' blood that washed our sins away, for none of us will find our way to heaven through any other means. And we give thanks for that. We give thanks for that sacrifice. We give thanks for Jesus' perfection. We give thanks for the Father sending him, knowing the pain that he would suffer. And we give thanks that he's raised from the dead and our salvation is secure. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
your kingdom come, your will be done, here as in heaven, spirit I bow, oh fresh oh. fresh to you this morning. God, we say thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us on the cross. Lord, we love you. We want to praise you because you are so worthy, Jesus. So worthy of our praise.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thanks, worship team. A beautiful, beautiful worship. Uh, this is good. And I have no, um, I have no control over what songs are chosen. Okay, so it's not 
not me, but the songs, that song especially, really uh, goes to what my message is all about. You know, that God, God is with us. Um, it's amazing how God works. Uh, the message from Jake was absolutely fantastic. Um, again, I might as well sit down. Jake said most of what I'm going to say. So, you know, it's it's really good. And when God is moving and uh, you get confirmation that God is, is with us because all these things just don't happen by chance, okay? They're not just, the, these things don't happen by chance. God is in it and God is with us. So never never lose heart, people, never lose heart. Um, I'm just going to um, uh, bring these prayers before I bring the message. So... Uh, we're, uh, we're praying for Naomi, uh, who lives in Melbourne. Um, Naomi's uh, uh, having a baby, and so we're just going to pray for protection, Lord, on, on Naomi. Father, at this time, I'm not sure if it's her first child or what, Lord, but Father, it's an, a momentous occasion. It's a life-changing, uh, as I know only too well, that having a child is... Um, the most life-changing thing that could ever happen to you really apart from being saved <laughs> having your salvation but having uh, just holding that that newborn it's it's uh, it is it changed my life forever and uh, and that was uh, quite a long time ago uh, my daughter will shoot me if I tell you how many years ago that was but so I won't but uh, but Lord so we do lift her up to you father we ask lord that uh, you be with her father uh, at the time of birth lord that it would go smoothly it would uh, go well father both uh, mum and baby would be uh, would be safe would be happy would be well father and uh, we just pray for the family lord as they uh, lord just admit this new uh, new life into their life lord knowing that uh, their life will be changed father and it's only for the good so thank you lord and uh, I want to pray uh, for my friend, Gordon Denton of Penrith. Um, Gordon is in ICU. I've known, uh, Gordon is probably my oldest uh, friend in, Christian, in my Christian life. Um, so I've known him for, uh, well, again, a long time. But he's in ICU. He's uh, under sedation, so he's um, basically keeping him asleep. He's on a dialysis machine, and uh, he's also on a ventilator. Um, he got a, vi a, a virus into his pacemaker, apparently, that the um, doctors didn't pick up very quickly. And, uh, of course, it led to all these problems. His kidneys are failing, his liver's not too good. He, the pacemaker, obviously, is not doing what it should do for his heart, so... Uh, so we really need to lift him up. So, Lord, I lift Gordon up to you, Father, that uh, the doctors will uh, be on top of the issues now, Father. Lord, that they've changed his uh, antibiotics, Lord. They seem to be uh, having an effect, Lord. So we just pray, Lord God, that you would strengthen his body. Father God, that you would just be with him, give him peace. We pray for his family, Lord, that they might uh, have your peace at this time, Lord. So we just lift him up to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, folks, so my message is titled, What Are You Focusing On? And uh, uh, they do a good job with these uh, overheads. Uh, fantastic what they're doing. Uh, that's nothing like what I put in uh, at all. Uh, so I think that's Luke's doing. So thank you, Luke, for making me look real good. It's, but anyway, so what are we focusing on? See, world news seems to be constantly focusing on the negative. Negative aspects of life are basically are what's filling the, the news these days. Every time you turn it on, it's, it's something that is uh, not very positive. Majority of issues reported by TV and print media uh, are, are negative in nature. And the old maxim that uh, good news doesn't sell newspapers seems to ring true. I don't know what it is about men, mankind, but we seem to thrive on uh, bad news for some unknown reason. I mean, you look at some of the movies that are out, you know, you're like, wow, uh, 
Mm. <laughs> Yet we, we, we seem to, you know, like gobble it up like you can't get enough of it, you know. Uh, asteroids hitting the earth and large earthquakes and all sorts of things. And, and we, 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 we just lap it up. But, but you know, it's really, um, if we get a constant diet of all of this thing, though, if that's all we're focusing on, then you're going to get a negative thought pattern into your life. And it could, if you're not careful, lead to all state. It could lead to all sorts of things. It could leave you to a state of denial. So you, you can start asking yourself, where is God in all of this? And then ultimately, if you keep that going down that track, it could lead you to a denial of your faith. See, we should look to our instruction manual for guidance in what we should indulge in. See, above all else, I think we should be seeking the truth. A scripture reveals to us what God's plan for humanity is about. Look to the scripture. And the scripture that Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says this. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Then he goes on to say, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And then he says this wonderful thing, and the God of peace will be with you. You know, it, it's not about you know, uh, it's not about ignoring things. Paul employs us to think about the good, the uplifting, the simple things that make life enjoyable. Okay? Um, you know, some of the most miserable people in the world have got money and a lot of it, but they're miserable. Some of the most happiest people I've seen uh, are people that are living in an African village with no running water, no electricity, but they're laughing and they're, they're having a great time. So it's about the simple things. It's about looking at, you know, not, not wanting, you know, I mean, my lifestyle's pretty good. I have, I turn a tap on, I have nice running fresh water. I don't have to worry about boiling it. I don't have to worry about walking, you know, 20 kilometers with a jug on my head to pick up water from the only uh, reliable source around. So, you know, my life is good. And uh, I thank God for that. See, and something that showed up on Friday, I, I still read the newspaper. Okay, I'm a, I'm a dinosaur, I admit it, I, I can't help it, but I still buy a newspaper. Well, Friday's newspaper was interesting because in it there were uh, photos, pictures. One showed, uh, or a couple showed, the utter destruction that occurred in Be Beirut. You know, total, absolutely catastrophic it was just absolutely terrible and the news and the pictures were uh, were pretty you know didn't look very nice but then I turned a couple of pages over and what did I see I see a photo that some guy had in a place called Mile Lakes I'm not quite sure where Mile Lakes is but he took this photo, and it's a pod of 50 dolphins surfing in this wave, all together, side by side. And I went, wow. You know, God is awesome when you look at something like that. I could have spent the day looking at or you know, bringing to mind all those awful images, or I could have looked at the dolphins. I knew which one I was looking at most. I know which one was more uplifting. You know, see, guarding what you put into your mind or into your head is important. It's not about denying what is going on, but it's about guarding what you think on, what you bring to mind. Okay, and and it can have an enormous benefit when you're looking at or focusing on the good stuff. Because if you constantly think bad, 
then have a guess what you're going to get? Bad. And when you're thinking among good stuff, your heart's going to be lifted. You're going to find things like your blood pressure is going to be better. And believe me, I need good blood pressure. Every time I go to the doctor, I, I, I don't know, I think it's something to do with actually going to the surgery more than anything. Because when I take it at home, I'm, 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 I'm about 130, which is good for me. Okay? I don't know if it's high, or high, but it's good for me. I go to the doctors and it's 151. He's a nice doctor. It's a nice surgery, but it's just something about walking through that door that tends to, yeah, get me a little antsy. Uh, but you know I mean and, and that's good because I'm on blood pressure tablets because before I was on blood pressure tablets I was feeling like lightheaded dizzy in the head and all that kind of stuff so I went to the doctor and said oh you know there's something wrong I'm not quite sure what it is he said let's check your blood pressure I said okay fair enough 201 and he said why are you still standing uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, blood pressure runs in my family so it's just something that uh, runs uh, it's, what's the word? Inherited? Heritary? Or one of them words, anyway. Um, but you, there you go, see? So it's just something. It's Dad had it, Mum had it, Granddad had it, you know, so. Brothers have had it, so, anyway. But it's under control, praise God. And if I keep thinking good, thi good thoughts, see, now I've got myself now to, when I go and sit in the doctor's surgery, and I sit there, and I know he's going to take my blood pressure, I, I start thinking good thoughts. I go to my happy place. And uh, it works. It's amazing. But, you know, it's so there you go. You see, when we're looking at the world news and what's being reported, we, we need to know that these are signs. Jesus tells us that there will be many signs on the earth and in the heavens above that will enable us to be aware of what's happening, okay? And, and enable us to be prepared for his return. Luke records this in, gospel, in his gospel, chapter 21, uh, verse 25. It says, There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming to the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these thing, things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. So knowing the signs to look out for is a good thing. You know, uh, Jesus tells us, Scripture tells us about there will be earthquakes, there will be wars, there will be rumours of wars, etc., etc. So knowing what is happening in the world shouldn't actually come as a surprise to, to, to us as Christians because this has all been set out in the Scriptures. But you just knowing that these things are going to happen should not uh, make you fearful either because you know what's going to happen. Jesus is coming back. <laughs> When all these things happen, Jesus is coming back, you know. And then when Jesus comes back, have a guess what? All this horrible stuff just disappears, goes away. You know, there'll be no more tears. There'll be no more uh, heartache. You know, Jesus wipes away every tear from your eye. You know, you will be in heaven, in paradise with him. And, hey, what a great thing. You know, so as far as what's happening in the world from a Christian point of view is we shouldn't be too afraid of it because uh, it means Christ is, is that one step closer to coming back. I have no idea. Okay, so don't quote me that he'll be back tomorrow because I have no idea when he's coming back. But he is coming back. Every, every scripture in the Old Testament that prophesied his coming came true. Every scripture that prophesied what he'd do while he was here came true. Every prophecy about how he was going to die came true. Okay, so every prophecy about his coming back is going to be true. Bible don't lie. Okay, see, the trouble is, is when we're looking at the world today, 
See, it, it, it's not hard not to tremble. It's hard not to fear fear for when all that you see and all that is recorded is how many people have, have caught COVID, how many people have died, you know. Very seldom do you hear about the number of people that have recovered. Very seldom do you hear about the number of people that have been tested and have been found negative, haven't got it. Okay, so, you know, when you start... <laughs> going with statistics and you know I used to <coughs> do statistics at work and uh, I did find that uh, you know depending on which way you looked at the piece of paper uh, it could you know, the statistics could mean almost whatever you wanted to but it's something that everybody looks at so there you go but statistically the number of people who haven't caught it is far greater than those that have and Okay, so it should not lead us into a state of fear. We should not let doom and gloom invade our minds and dictate to us how we're feeling. If you allow only negative information in, then that is what's going to happen. You're going to be negative. You're going to be a negative person. Okay? And have a guess what, folks? People don't like to be around negative people. So if you haven't got any friends, maybe you want to have a look at yourself. But anyway, that's as a side effect. See, the Bible tells us that a merry heart is good like, you know, it's good, good medicine, good for the bones. Isaiah had this to say about people who keep their eyes on the Lord. You will, keep, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Again, I keep, I've said it for the last couple of weeks, you know, you've got to trust in God. Regardless of the circumstances of what you see, what's happening, you've got to keep your trust on God because God will bring you through. So trusting in God keeps you focused on what is important. And if your focusing is on God, it, it, it will, he will get you through crisis after crisis. No matter what the crisis is, not just the current one, because uh, I believe that this isn't going to be the end of it. There's going to be more. Uh, when men start playing with things, and trying to uh, um, manipulate nature, they're playing with fire. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever know uh, where this COVID came from, because I don't think the Chinese government's going to be all that cooperative. Uh, so I don't think we'll ever know whether it came from a, a wet market or a uh, or a uh, um, uh, a lab. Thank you. I'm not sure. But all I know is that man has been playing around with things for a long time. Uh, you know, got to the point where biological warfare uh, was banned, supposedly, but uh, nations still do it, <laughs> unfortunately. But we do. We too tend to want to play God, and uh, playing God has dire consequences. Go away. I still haven't got this worked out, folks. You see, our enemy, we all know who he is. We won't give him too much credit. But he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom you may devour. And, and without faith, that could be you. That could be you. It could be me. If we don't keep our faith, we don't keep our eyes focused and fixed on the Lord and on Jesus and what he's done for us, then we are fodder, <laughs> folks. We, we, we'll be just chewed up and spat out if we're not keeping our eyes fixed on Christ. Paul writes in the last chapter of Ephesians from verse 10 uh, the following words. Now, I'll just take special note on the faith bit. So finally be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God 
so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Okay, remember that, folks. Okay, your neighbor is not your enemy. Okay, he might not know Christ, but he's not your enemy. It's the spirits behind what they do that is your enemy, not the person themselves. It's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes on the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and request. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. And keep on the alert. The devil is always moving. He's always doing something. Okay, now whether it be with the things like what we're currently experiencing, where it allows people to doubt. It allows people to, uh, to succumb to fear. And... Uh, God doesn't want that for his people. You know, scripture tells us that he hasn't given us the spirit of fear. So, you know, he doesn't want that for you. And Paul, he singles out the shield of faith as the protection we need from the fiery darts of the enemy. Now, in most cases, these are not life-threatening injuries or, or major attacks. They're just more like little jabs, subtle little jabs. They, all, they come at you at what you believe. I mean, they, it, it started in the garden, didn't it? Did God really say? He didn't actually come out and, you know, uh, overtly tell them, you know, you know eat, eat the apple or, or whatever the fruit was. But it was just a subtle little jab. Did God really say? And this is how he can work on us. Subtle little jabs. Because if he came on at you full on and you know and uh, came at you in a roar you'd 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 be able to go oh i know you i i can recognize this and you could you'd stand up and you'd you know you put up your shield of faith but he doesn't do that he comes subtle he'll just you know he'll hit you very very softly with something you know could be anything really you know is it really bad you know, to to uh, stay at home because it's raining on Sunday. Okay, should I go to church? No, 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 no. it's raining today. Uh, they won't miss you. Stay home. Yeah, stay where it's warm. You'll be right. Well, no, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. When when you forsake the the gathering together, when you forsake coming to God then you're on a bit of a slippery slope. And you need to be careful. Because once that little subtle thing is in your mind, okay, the next time it happens, it's a lot easier to say, oh, yeah, of course, no, no, I won't go. You know? And by the time you've done it four or five times, you, you just don't bother coming anymore. Because you've got it in your head that you don't need to. See, the, we need to put on that armor. We need to build ourselves up. We need to make sure that our faith is strong. And it can only be strong if you are in the presence of God. Okay. When you're in the presence of God. Okay. Now, as an example, okay, the Bible says the devil goes around like a roaring lion. Well, uh, I read this article once about what happens with an old lion okay he's lost his teeth and all that kind of stuff toothless tiger but what what they do he, he goes out and he roars at the animals and the animals run away from him he's not going to chase them because he's too old but he can roar 
and the animals run away from him, but what are they running to? They're running to the rest of the pride or the rest of the troop who are waiting in ambush. And they run, smack in. And then what happens then? If you look at any of these um, documentaries on, thing, on uh, you know, wildlife and so on, which animal gets uh, to be caught and eaten? The one on its own? Or the weak one? The one that's not with the herd? The one on his own? And he's a prime target. And inevitably, uh, a lion must eat, so you know we won't hold that against them uh, until the Lord comes back and then the lion will lie down with the lamb and that'll be good. But that's what happens. And that's an analogy that you could use for us. We, when we are not with the herd, when we're out there on our own, then we're more likely to fall prey. Because on our own, we, uh, we don't have the strength. You see, uh, there's two or three animals, two or three lions or whatever, gang up on one poor old, uh, El, what are they call Elans or Roebucks or whatever, they, whatever they're chasing. And, and it's, you know, inevitable that the, at the end of the day, you know, they get their prey. But when they stick together... When you're in the herd, there's a lot more protection. Okay. You know, we need to understand that we need to pray in the Spirit. Uh, Paul tells us to pray at all times. All times. Pray in the Spirit. Okay. If you don't know what to pray for, pray in the Spirit. And that's praying in tongues. You don't have to uh, understand it because it's what God, it's a, a language that God understands. The devil doesn't understand it. It's hocus pocus as far as he's concerned. But God understands it. So if, got, if you don't know, if you're in such a state that you don't know what to pray for, pray in tongues. And this is what Paul writes to his letter uh, in his letter to the church of Philippi. Um, Chapter 4, it says, it says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And this is the important bit. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Did you get that? Okay. He, he didn't say I can do this all things through my strength. No. I can do this through him who gives me strength. Regardless of the circumstances Paul found himself in, he was able to say that with, with great confidence that it is Christ who gives him the strength to continue, to do it, to go through. Okay. So out of that, folks, I tell you, don't try and do things on your own. If you've got a problem, take it to the Lord. You know, you've got issues, take it to the Lord. <laughs> I just come in, a song just come into my head. You know the old song, "Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer." You know, it's an old song, but the words are true. They haven't changed much, and that's just popped into the head. <laughs> You know, it's Christ's strength that's going to get you through. The focus of Paul was on his was on his provider, not his current need of, of provision or lack thereof. A timely reminder to us that we may be more focused on the provider and not the need. Over and over, the enemy will fire those little darts at you. And he'll come at you with things like, who do you think you are? That's a good one. Like, who do you think you are? You know, you, you get down to pray and it, you, you, into your head comes, who do you think you are? Do you think God's going to listen to you? Am I the only one? No, I hope not. See, and he'll come and say, yeah, what gives you the right? Well, my answer is, God says, I'm his son. 
That gives me the right. Devil, go chase yourself. Or worse to that effect. You can be a little more boisterous if you want to be, but no need to be. You just tell, you just tell in Jesus' name, get lost. And, and he has to. The name of Jesus carries so much power that we don't really understand in the West all that much or all that well. Um, but it does. It, it can't, has so much power, you know. And uh, But see, this is what Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And this is a little bit of good news uh, that I think is good news anyway. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Our emphasis then is on the new me. The old me is dead. He just doesn't know it yet. And, and at times, the old me won't lie down. You know, it's a battle. It's a battle every day to keep the old me where he belongs, in the past, gone, dead. But he don't, we don't want to stay there. He doesn't want to stay there. And it's, so it's a battle every day to make sure that the new you comes out on top. You see, you know, we've all got old habits or traits that we, you know, would perhaps not rather not have or we would like to get rid of. And, and the old me says, why? <laughs> but the new me says, because Christ wants you to. And as I said last week, you know, what voice are you going to listen to? Whichever voice you listen to is going to win. So you can either listen to your old voice that says, well, why do you want to give up that? Why, why, you know, that's not hurting you. Or well, that's not that, but, you know, uh, God saying, yes, get rid of it. I don't want it. it it's whatever it might be. It's, a, uh, it's something that can stop you from coming to the Lord. Or it's something that the devil could use to drive a wedge between you and God. So you need to, you know, listen to the new you, and take a, take notice of what the new you is telling you. You are a new creation. And that's that's it. End of story. Okay, that's what Scripture says. The Scripture calls you a new creation. If you are born again, you are a new creature. Don't, don't let the devil tell you otherwise. This is what Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So when the devil comes at you, you just tell him, I'm a new creation, I'm a new creature. I don't need to do that anymore because that's not me. That's not me. I'm different. David in Psalm 19 speaks to God about being kept from willful sin. And then he says this in verse 14. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. You see, when you're trying to change or move on from what you used to be, you need to have something that is an anchor. You need to have something that is a firm foundation. Because the devil is going to make everything rocky and he's going to make everything, you know, around you uh, very unstable. You know, um, when we, when we uh, moved on from the Anglican church to... Um, to a uh, Pentecostal church. Um, I lost so many friends, it's incredible. Uh, but see, God is my rock. And uh, 
nothing against uh, what the Anglican Church believes, but you know, I found that uh, what God wanted me to do was to, to uh, follow His leading, and uh, it did mean that uh, a lot of people that I knew just didn't want to know me anymore, which is a bit of a shame. But I found my rock, and I found where I could stand and know that. Uh, my understanding of scripture was, was correct, was right. And uh, that God is a healer today. That God does move by his spirit. That God does want to you to speak in tongues. And God does want you to communicate with him. And God wants to have a, 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 a relationship with you, not just a, uh, uh, a head knowledge that, oh, this God, I know about him and... and and he's, you know, this, that, and the other. But, but this relationship which means that God is more real to you uh, than you, uh, you know, could. It's just as real to you as, as you know, as Jackie is to me. You know, we've been married forty. Yeah, yeah mm, ah, remember, Derek, you get in trouble. Forty-six years. Uh, so, but God is just as real to me a, as my wife is. And we've known, we've been married 46 years and we've known one another for 50. So that's a long time, isn't it? For all you young folks who haven't even reached halfway through to that yet. But, uh, but see, that's, that's the reality that you, we should be having. We should be having the reality that God is so real to us. He's just as real as, you know, your family or whatever. He is as closer than a brother, I think we... we but this is it. You must have this rock. You must have a rock in the midst of swirling emotions and conflicts of thoughts and ideas. Otherwise, uh, where are you going to go? You go wherever, you, wherever the wind blows, basically. If you don't have a rock, if you don't have a firm foundation, you'll go wherever. You know, some <coughs> person will come along with some great idea or great thought and you might go, wow, gee, that's good. But he's so far out of scripture, out of uh, context with scripture, that it's beyond a joke. Yet, because you don't have a firm foundation, you think, gee, that sounds good. I'll try that. And before you know where you are, you're, <laughs> you're in trouble. And David had this to say in Psalm 61, verse 2, when he found himself in a distressing circumstance. Now, this applies to everybody. He says, from the ends of the earth, I call to you. So it doesn't matter where you are, okay? It doesn't matter you're sitting in the church here, you're sitting in your car, you're sitting at home, you're down at uh, Macca's or wherever you can go these days to have a cup of coffee. You can call to him. I, from the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than high. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. Okay, Jesus is your tower. Jesus is your refuge. You need to go to him when you are, you know, all, all the time really, but when you are in strife or in trouble or whatever, then you need to know that you've got this refuge. You see, if your focus is on God, then God will deliver. You've just got to look at the stories of Daniel, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the, in the Old Testament, whose focus was on God. You know, we won't bow down to your image. We won't bow down to your craven image. They got thrown in the lion's den, thrown in the fiery furnace, but their focus was on God, and God brought them through. And so you keep your focus on the Lord, it's, it's, it's also timely that we understand there is a, 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 in the scripture, there is this principle of reaping and sowing, okay? Uh, so if our desire is to please God, then we will do the things that please him and not what pleases us. And it, it is difficult because, um, as I said, the old man, uh, <laughs> he just don't want to lie down and die. He, he wants to keep, he wants to keep, you know some control over you and he wants to do what he wants to do and and i'm going to do it regardless you know you just try and stop me 
well, you've got to say to that old man, get lost. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. It's just, it's always an issue. It's always a problem. It will never go away. Okay? It will never go away. Because as you overcome one thing, something else will crop up. The devil is very good at reminding you of things that happened in your life, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago or however old you are. But, he, you know, he can go back until the day you were born if he wants to. And he can bring all these things up and he can throw them at you and you can go, oh, yeah, well, ooh. So getting, uh, overcoming one thing doesn't, don't let your guard down. Because there's something else that he, that he could just simply throw you away and you need to overcome that as well. So it's a constant battle, but it's a constant battle if you're with Christ that you can overcome. You will overcome. We are overcomers. As simple as that. Galatians. Paul writes to the Galatians. And this is about the reaping and sowing bit. Chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Can't get much plainer than that. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Amen. You know, um, doing good is good. Pretty, pretty, pretty plain. But God has set things before us to do before we became Christians. You know, there are things in this world that only you can do. I can't do it for you and... You can't do what I can do and I can't do what you do and all that kind of stuff. So we've all got things that God has put in place for us to do. And while we're doing good things, it, it tends to, my, in my way of thinking, take your thoughts off anything else. If you're helping people and, and being, uh, you know, being uh, the best person you can be with Christ's help and you're doing things for people, you're being good in a sense. It takes all thoughts, all negative thoughts out, 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 the he out your head. They just go away. You know, when you're helping somebody or doing something for somebody, your own problems and your own issues just simply you know, go away. You don't think about them anymore because you're concentrating on doing good for somebody. And, you know, that can be a lifestyle for us or should be a lifestyle for us. See, I said in, in the last couple of weeks that Christ will not leave us as orphans. He, he did send us the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that, that we can call on to help us in our times and, and, and to help us do these things. You know, I spoke last week about the fruit of the Spirit. God brings the fruit of the Spirit into our lives, love, joy, peace. These things are free, free gifts from God. And these are the things that we should cultivate in our life. And this is what Paul says to the Ephesians in chapter 2. He starts this way. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient okay so that straight away tells me that you know i don't need to and i shouldn't look down on people because let's face it i'm really no different than anybody else except that i've been saved by christ right, so i shouldn't be looking at people uh, in, a, in a different way all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. 
And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Where are you now? Physically, you're sitting in High Street Church. Spiritually, you are, where are you? Seated in the heavenly places. And at one time and one day, your, whatever's left of your mortal body, will be up in heaven as well. So we're seated with Christ in the heavenly realms in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's the gift of God. Okay, It's not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Jess, could you? Okay, so we are different. We should be different. We should be seen to be different. We should be um, out there doing good. And uh, wherever you can, whatever opportunities come your way to do good, then grab a hold of it and do it. Whether it's bake a cake for somebody or whatever it might be. This is the new you. You're raised up with Christ and you are seated in the heavenly places. That's Scripture is a fact. You are seated in the heavenly places. And my uh, final scripture, and this is my final word, it comes from Psalms. And no matter what circumstances you might find yourself in at this time, you've got to be reassured that God will provide. And this is Psalm, obviously, I think everybody knows what this Psalm is, Psalm 23. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely... Your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, I've said it many times in this message and I've lost my page. Here we go. Got one. Yeah. I've said it many times in this message. I've said it again. I'll keep on saying it. You need to keep your focus on God. Now more than ever, you need to keep your focus on the Lord. It's too easy to be led astray if you're not focused. So thank you, folks. I just pray that you have a great week. That you know that God is with you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what your circumstances are, I pray that you know beyond all doubt that God is with you. As Pastor Wayne says, he knows in his Noah that God is with him. So I just pray that this week you feel God in a new way. If, you, uh, uh, if you've never prayed in tongues or you've never... Uh, done anything like that before that this week may be a, a new beginning for you in that regard that you may just speak with a new language to God and you just feel the freedom that that brings into your prayer life it's amazing so uh, I just thank you all have a great great week remember folks uh, if you want a coffee go